welcome. Throughout the semester, it's going to be important that you can round correctly and also deal with proportions. So chapter zero here called course readiness just gives us the opportunity to review rounding rules and then we'll deal with proportions as well. So rounding is a type of estimation. So I live about five miles from campus and that's actually true. It's probably closer to five and a half, but I usually just round it to five. Um, Chester here is my dog who is seven years old, definitely an estimation because even as I'm speaking, he's aging, right? He could be seven years, two months, three days, five hours, 10 minutes, etc. So just rounding there. And then the churro has 300 calories. Calories are a measurement of energy and food, and these are rounded values. So let's just go through rounding rules. So we're rounding to the nearest place value. And I have the place values, at least some of them over here. So you have a visual, and then we'll step through the rules with these examples. All right, so for number one, it says round to the nearest tenth. So the tenths position is also equivalently referred to as rounding to one decimal place. So the first digit, the first place after the decimal point. So for A, we have 2.254. So I know I put the rounding digit there in bold. I'm gonna also just draw a line next to it. So the rounding rules say we look to the right, the right digit, next to our rounding digit. So we look at the digit to the right. And if that digit is five or greater, we round up. So that digit is five. So that two is going to go up to a three. So we call it rounding up because we're actually going to a slightly higher value. But now we're having an accuracy to the nearest tenth. So one decimal place. All right, so for B, the first decimal place has a five as a digit. So there's our rounding digit. And now to the right of it is a four. So if the digit to the right is less than five, like four, we round down. So we go smaller than this number by keeping that rounding digit the same. And I'm just going to write equal rather than approximate. We know that we're rounding, so it's just easier through the course here. We'll just go ahead and be okay with an equal sign. And that would be 73 point. And again, that five would stay uh, five. So that's rounding down. All right, and then for C, we just need to be a little careful. The rounding digit is a nine with a six next to it. So nine goes up to 10. So the nine would be a zero and the one would carry over to the seven in the ones position. So the seven would go up to eight. So this would be 28.0. And we include the point zero rather than just saying 28 because it lets people know, the reader know that we did have an accuracy to the nearest tenth. So we did round to one decimal place. And then D, the rounding digit is a nine with a seven next to it. So the nine would go up to 10, which would cause the next nine to go up to 10 which would cause the seven to go up to eight. So that would be 80.0. All right. So then we'll just go through the next set here a little bit more quickly. So these are rounding to the nearest hundredth. So the hundredth position is also equivalently referred to as rounding to two decimal places. So for A, we have a six in that position with a four next to it. So we call that rounding down because the six stays a uh, six. And then for B, the six has a five next to it. So six would go up to seven. All right, and then for C, the nine has a seven next to it. So nine goes up to 10. So the six goes up to a seven. So 0 0.70. Again, including that last zero there. So the reader knows it's two decimal places that we're rounding to. And then finally for D, the rounding digit has a five next to it. So nine goes up to 10, the next nine goes up to 10. So the two there goes up to three. So 13.00. All right, so you can round to 
any place value. And hopefully that's a good review if you needed it. And then let's move on to proportions. All right, so proportions represent a part of the whole and they can rep be represented as fractions, decimals, or percentages. And we wanna be comfortable with all three versions here. So first, let's just step through this example. So Chester was given 100 attempts at catching a Frisbee and he successfully caught 25 of them. So my visual here, each block is an attempt and he caught 25 out of those 100 attempts. So I'm just gonna write the word proportion. So a pr proportion is a part of a whole. Let's do fraction first, 25 of them out of the 100. So that is actually the definition of 25%. So percent means per 100. So each of these blocks is a percent. So 25 per 100, 25 per cent. All right, so those are equivalent. And then let's talk decimal. So I am gonna bring up my calculator just for a moment. So we could take 25 over 100 and change it to a decimal by dividing. So I just saw it's already on my calculator there, but 25 divided by 100 is 0 0.25. Okay, so all of these are equivalent. What will be nice throughout the semester is that we're able to quick be able to quickly go back and forth between a percent version of a value and its decimal equivalent. So that's what we'll take a look at. So for number one here, it says, rewrite this percentage as a decimal. So I'll write this one first as its fraction form, and then we'll avoid this step moving forward. But 95% means 95 per 100. So if we were to divide that, we would get 0.95. So 0 0.95. All right, so what we want to do is realize that anytime we have a percent, to get it into its decimal form, if you remove the percent symbol, so if we remove that percent symbol and then move the decimal point left two places, we'll get our decimal version. So there's 95%, I removed the percent symbol. So right now the decimal point would be right there. So to change a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal two places to the left that will quickly give us our decimal version. So let's try that here. So I'm just going to write the five without the percent symbol. And there's the decimal. And we're gonna go two places to the left. If there are any digits missing, they get filled in with zeros. So 5% in decimal is 0 0.05. All right, and then 100% equivalent there, so 100%. So if Chester caught all the Frisbees, sorry, if he caught all 100 out of 100, then that, using our same rule here, when you move the decimal left two places, you're going to have 1.00, and then usually we, we would just say one there. So 100% means one whole group of Frisbees. All right, and then how about going the other direction? How do you rewrite the decimal version of a number as a percentage? So we just go in reverse here. So now we move the decimal point right two places and then we include the percent symbol. So 0.75, moving that decimal two places. I'll write that just for this one a little bigger here. So there's the 75 and right now the decimal point is here. So we move it left two places. And then we make sure that we don't forget to write the percent symbol. All right, and then the next one, move it two places to the right, you'll have 2.5, put the percent symbol. And then for the last one here, just writing this one a little bigger. So if we had 0 0.3, 
and we move the decimal two places to the right, we'd fill in that missing digit with a zero. So 0 0.3 is equivalent to 30%. All right, so that's my suggestion for going back and forth percentage to decimal or decimal to percent. Okay, and then one last thing on rounding here. So number three, it says round this value to the nearest tenth. So the tenth is the first decimal place. So the rounding digit is the two. It has a nine next to it. So two would go up to three. So that's nearest tenth. All right, let's see how that compares to, it's the same number, but now it says rewrite the decimal as a percentage, round it to the nearest tenth of a percent. So not nearest tenth, but tenth of a percent. So what we would do here, we know when we change a decimal to a percent, the decimal point is going to go to the right two places. So the number in the tenth position, once you move that decimal point, the five is going to be in that position. So the rounding digit is actually the third digit when the number is written as a decimal. So it'll hopefully look better once I write the answer. So the five has a two next to it. So five would remain a five. So this would be 29.5 percent. So percents don't have to be whole numbers. You can have a fraction of a percent. That's a tenth, not a regular tenth. It's a tenth of a percent. So let me just see if we can give you the visual here. So this is the deal. I'm gonna just make my picture bigger. Each of these blocks is a percent. So if that's 25% of the picture, that'd be 26, 27, 28, 29. So yours, you might have trouble kind of coloring it in there. But if I color those four blocks, I'd be up to 29%. And our answer down there, 29.5%. So the 0.5 is half of the next box, right? So it would just be half of the next box, 0.5. So we can have fractions of a percent. So important to pay attention to the rounding directions. All right, so we'll end here with an exam. So an exam had 45 multiple choice questions and you answer 39 of them correctly. Write your score as a percent rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent. All right, so let's start with the fraction version. You answered 39 out of 45 correct. That's your proportion correct as a fraction. And then let's write the decimal version of that. So 39, divide that by 45. And that's 0 0.8666, and it's 666. It's actually repeating, but regardless of what comes after the fourth digit there, I'm just going to write dot, dot, dot. So that's the decimal version. So if we were rounding to a regular tenth, we'd be rounding the eight but we're not doing the regular 10th, we're doing 10th of a percent. So the value in the nearest 10th of a percent will be that third decimal place because when we change to a percent, we're gonna move that decimal, it's gonna be right there. So that six will be in the 10th position as a percent. So that six, has a six next to it. So our six there would go up to a seven. So as a percent, we would have 86.7%. All right, and hopefully that is a good review of proportions for you as well.